The war between humanity and the Combine changed everything after their assault on planet Earth. Throughout this chaos, humanity came together in an attempt to fight back against these aliens from the shadows with the hope to remove them from their home. A fight that would last well over 20 years. Within this resistance, one person was imperative to the success of this goal. Who was this man? What was his role in the attempt to take down the mighty Combine Empire? And how does his story end? Here we explore in the lore and story behind Dr. Isaac Kleiner. Way back before humanity submitted to the Combine, a young scientist by the name of Dr. Isaac Kleiner worked hard to study and understand the foundation of how the universe worked around him. And through this determination, his bright mind made great waves in the scientific community. At one point, he managed to land himself a position as a tutor at a prestigious university, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where he taught the next wave of scientists, each with their own ambition to make their mark. As a tutor, he met many great and enthusiastic minds as he taught them all he knew. One of these minds was Dr. Gordon Freeman. Over time, Isaac became fond of Gordon and their relationship would only strengthen through many trials as unforeseen waves of conflict came. With his many experiences and knowledge, Kleiner wrote books on his work and became recognized as one of the leaders of innovation. One notable moment being a step up in his career when a magazine, Popular Scientist, reached out to him to learn more about his work and quantum physics, which he was all too happy to talk about. After this, his reputation just continued to improve, where he released a book called From Here to There in Under a Second. As a widely recognized scientist and with his work appearing to be promising, Isaac was offered a position at a top secret research facility in the New Mexico desert, where the funding and resources here would only allow him to improve upon his theories and work. After accepting the offer, Isaac moved to the isolated location and began his new life. As a new employee of the Black Mesa Research Facility, Isaac settled in to his role in the Sector C test labs, the home of the Anomalous Materials team. In this lab, the faculty were tasked with analyzing exotic materials procured by the Black Mesa survey team from the border world of Zen using the specially built anti-mass spectrometer. Working within his team, he learned that this machine essentially blasted the Zenian crystal samples with energy to agitate the matter. There, Isaac and his team would then document and analyze the displacement energy that came from this agitation. On his team, Isaac met the people that he would see as family for the next few years, and one of these was Dr. Eli Vance. Over time, the anomalous materials team did their part in the exploration and understanding of the border world of Zen, and with many crystal samples coming into his lab to analyze with the anti-mass spectrometer, Isaac and his team were kept busy as they entered new territory. With more work to be done, more staff needed to be hired to help with the workload, and here, Isaac had the perfect candidate in mind to join the team. Having kept in touch with Gordon since his time as a tutor and with a lead role within the Anomalous Materials team, Kleiner reached out to his old student and offered to write him a recommendation for the job posting, which, with his MIT studies, experience with teleportation in Austria and Kleiner's approval, Black Mesa offered Gordon Freeman the role. Although the work in the Sector C test labs was exciting and revolutionary, Isaac still had his own projects that he wanted to work on, but to pursue these, he relied on grant money to fund them. The problem was that Isaac was not the only ambitious person at Black Mesa. When new funding opportunities came up, he would go up against the other scientists working here, where he would form a rivalry against another member of his team, Dr. Arnie Magnuson. This rivalry would lead to constant bickering and uncomfortable situations. As a fairly passive but driven person, Kleiner became liked by most of his colleagues. Over the years, he became closer to Dr. Eli Vance and after Eli had a daughter, Alex, 
he in a sense became her uncle. From records, it appears he did not have a family of his own, but it seemed that Eli had welcomed him in to his. Alongside this, he also had a great relationship with Gordon and a security guard at the facility, Barney Calhoun. Although brilliant, Isaac was also forgetful where he would, on occasion, lock himself out of his lap, leaving Gordon and Barney to race in competition to unlock the door for him. Alongside his duties in the anomalous materials lab, Isaac also kept himself busy with some administrative tasks where he oversaw what happened around his department. In addition to this, he also took a hands-on role in preparing the Black Mesa personnel in the use of the hazardous environmental suit, a powerful piece of armor that protected the Black Mesa survey team in the exploration of Zen, as well as the materials handlers that worked with the Zenian crystal samples. Life for Dr. Kleiner appeared to be great. He had a job he loved, a chosen family, and the ability to further his research with the help of Black Mesa's resources. But, as we know, this would not last. As time passed, the technology advanced and Black Mesa became more adventurous in their exploration of Zen. Believed to be around May 16th in the early 2000s, the administrator of Black Mesa, Dr. Wallace Breen, asked the Anomalous Materials team to analyze a crystal sample just like they had done many times before. But this one was different. They were told that Breen had gone to great lengths to acquire it and that they needed to achieve a conclusive analysis of the sample, even if it meant going outside of the standing testing procedures to achieve it. This put immense pressure on not only the scientists of Black Mesa, but also the facility itself, where the power required to activate the anti-mass spectrometer left other parts of the facility without power. Something was off about this whole situation, but happy to achieve results, Kleiner followed his orders to prepare for this experiment. On the day of the experiment, Isaac and his team were running behind, but to their luck, Gordon was also running late, allowing them more time to prepare. The pressure of this situation was rising by the minute, and even one scientist stationed at the entrance of the test chamber began to fear the potential of a resonance cascade occurring. Waiting in the control room of the anti-mass spectrometer, Kleiner and his team continued to prepare as Gordon walked in, all ready to go as the materials handler for this experiment. After filling Gordon in with their plan and Dr. Breen's pressure that he had put on the team, Isaac watched from above as the materials handler entered the test chamber. Watching from above, the team instructed Gordon to push the Zenian crystal sample into the beam of the anti-mass spectrometer, and then everything changed. As the crystal hit the beam, it shattered, flooding the chamber with exotic energy where it formed a resonance cascade. In this chaos, Kleiner managed to escape the violent beams of the machine as he watched his colleagues fall prey to the destruction. As an aftermath of the resonance cascade, Earth and Zen became linked, allowing hostile alien lifeforms to teleport into the facility. During this impossible situation, Isaac somehow avoided the dangers that had come with this catastrophe evading not only the hostile alien creatures, but also the military forces sent in to take out any witnesses to this disaster. Over the following hours, Isaac arrived outside of the facility safely, but he had not truly escaped the Black Mesa incident. Speaking of the dangers in the world, this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. With over 6 million users worldwide, Atlas VPN was created to make the internet accessible and secure for everyone, and it is one of the most affordable VPNs out there. Simply put, Atlas VPN encrypts and hides your virtual information so that hackers, the government, advertisers, and even your internet service provider cannot spy on you. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount. It means you can get a three-year subscription for $183 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Time is running out, so get your deal by clicking on the link below. Now, we know VPNs hide your data, but we all know the main reason for using them, getting past those region locks on Netflix. 
I recently wanted to rewatch Manifest, but it isn't available on the UK Netflix, but it is available on the Italian Netflix. So I just clicked on the streaming tab on Atlas VPN and selected the Italian server. A great way to relax after a long day of editing. Thanks again to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. If you are interested, then click on the link in the description to get your 83% discount and upgrade your security, hide your information and bypass those region locks today. Now back to the law. As a result of the resonance cascade, a domino effect occurred, leading the Combine, a multi-dimensional alien empire to discover Earth. With their own goal to enslave all of the sentient life they came across and adapt them into their armies, they attacked Earth. To this, humanity fought against this alien army, but as one small planet against a perfectly crafted army, they lost in a mere seven hours, where a new normal began. As the years passed under the Combine rule, Isaac kept contact with Eli, who had also survived the incident. As survivors of Black Mesa, and with an understanding of what had actually brought the Combine here, they refused to bow down to their alien overlords and decided to do something about it, where they formed a resistance. After being relocated to City 17, a settlement constructed by the Combine to hold and monitor humanity in the sector, Isaac discovered an abandoned warehouse where he believed he could work in secret on technologies to help those who refused to comply. With Isaac working in City 17, Eli moved into the canals where he developed his own resistance base, which he named Black Mesa East. In addition to this, the duo also managed to keep in contact with Arnie Magnuson, where he escaped City 17 and moved into the Outlands and set up another resistance base, White Forest. With three bases, each one became a different arm of the resistance. Arnie worked on technology to aid humanity in the event another seven hour war situation were to occur. In Black Mesa East, Eli worked on technology, weaponry and raiding combine facilities. And with Isaac's base being set up right inside of City 17, it appeared that he sought to help those trapped inside of the city escape to safety to Black Mesa East. To Kleiner's luck, Barney Calhoun had also survived the Black Mesa incident and, coincidentally, had been relocated to City 17 too. Doing what he could to help the resistance, Barney joined the Civil Protection, the Combine's police force. Inside of the Combine ranks, he leaked every piece of information he could to Isaac, where he could, in turn, relay this information to other bases and operatives in the city. Over the years, the resistance grew and became a problem for the Combine to the point where random raids were conducted across the city on those suspected of being a part of the resistance or having information about them. With Barney's information, Kleiner could stay safe from these raids as well as alert those at risk of being caught. With their resistance up and running, Isaac and Eli discovered the danger of relying on a newly developed underground railroad consisting of many smaller resistance bases to escape the city. With knowledge on how teleportation worked during their time in Black Mesa, they began work on their own teleporters with the theory that when complete, they could easily transport themselves and resistance members covertly between the bases, making use of a relay device still on Zen. But this technology would be difficult to perfect. Throughout, they would communicate through video chat, keeping each other company. During these troubling years, Alex had grown up and with Eli Vance as her father, she became handy in combat as well as how human and alien technology worked. As a member of the resistance, she visited Isaac in City 17 and helped him. He had watched this girl grow up and she, in part, was family, where she called him Uncle Kleiner. In their family, Barney also took on the role of caring for him, where he would check in on him from time to time to make sure he was doing okay. Curious about the alien creatures that had arrived on Earth during the Resonance Cascade and following invasion, Isaac managed to capture a roaming head crab and with his curiosity, he removed its beak, taking away its ability to latch onto human hosts. As a non-dangerous creature, 
Isaac took on this head crab as his pet and called her Lamar. The resistance was growing, but the progress on teleportation was still slow. On one occasion, Dr. Kleiner introduced a cat into his teleportation experiments with the help of Barney, but the experiment went extremely wrong, resulting in the death of the cat, an event that would give Barney nightmares. Kleiner had to be extremely careful not to attract the attention of the Combine with being so close to their network, but thanks to Barney's inside information, he continued to aid the resistance in the best way he could. Surprisingly, although Kleiner appeared to be the more cautious and reserved out of the leaders of the resistance, with his base and home being in the most dangerous place it could be, maybe he had an inner strength that no one else saw and as the years passed, he would continue to play his role in an ever-growing resistance. 20 long years after the resonance cascade had changed everything, Isaac still worked with Eli to perfect teleportation technology, and they were getting close. Their resistance had grown strong over time, with various bases scattered across the dangerous wasteland places for the refugees of City 17 to escape through, as well as locations that the Resistance had set up to fight with the Combine. The Resistance just needed a spark to begin their revolution, and begin the strike to take back their planet. On a standard day, their spark arrived in the form of Dr. Gordon Freeman. This man had disappeared during the Resonance Cascade, and many believed him to have died in the chaos as he travelled to the border world of Zen to take out the creature partly responsible for the chaos that had occurred. Working in his lab, Dr. Kleiner received a call from his undercover agent, who had been positioned at the City 17 train station. As he spoke with Calhoun, he saw Gordon standing behind him, the man he had taught at MIT and worked with in his lab, the man many thought had died. Aware that this sudden appearance could mean something, he asked Gordon to travel to his lab. To Gordon's luck, on his journey, Alex met him and brought him directly to Dr. Kleiner's secret lab. The Black Mesa incident had changed everything, but Gordon was back and luckily, Kleiner had been working on a hazardous environmental suit. He understood this technology, he had worked on it, and trained others on how to use it. If the Combine became aware of Gordon's return, then they would capture him on site, and so, with the Underground Railroad posing a slight risk, Isaac decided that they should try the teleporter again and send Gordon to Eli's lab. He and Eli had worked on it over the years, and with a new addition to the Resistance, Dr. Judith Mossman, they had made great progress on development. With the great news of Gordon's return, Isaac called Eli to let him know, and together, they prepared to send Gordon to Black Mesa East. As they powered up the teleporter, Isaac asked Alex to step in first. This machine had the capability to transport the user from one place to another, and it could help the resistance in a huge way. But, standing nervously, Barney worried about another cat situation occurring. Luckily, the teleportation was successful and Alex arrived safely in Black Mesa East. Just like with Alex's sequence, Gordon stepped into the teleporter and the process began. Unfortunately, during the power-up, Lamar jumped onto the machinery and damaged it, where it malfunctioned and sent Gordon to various locations across Earth, one of which being the office of Dr. Wallace Breen, who, in the 20 years since the Resonance Cascade, had become Earth's administrator. Finally landing outside of his lap, Isaac watched as Gordon fled into City 17 on his journey on foot to Black Mesa East. His friend and colleague had returned, and this could only mean good things for the Resistance. Over the next few days, Isaac heard reports from the Resistance as Gordon passed through their bases on his way to Black Mesa East. Unfortunately, Black Mesa East was later attacked just after Gordon arrived by Combine forces searching for him, which led to a further assault on Nova Prospect to rescue a newly captured Eli Vance. From his lab, Isaac received a call from Alex letting him know that she and Gordon had found his captured friend and that they were on their way back. 
This assault then led to the destruction of Nova Prospect, a location that had been developed into a stronghold and a prison by the Combine, a place that spread fear to everyone under the Combine rule. The destruction of Nova Prospect was a signal to the Resistance that if this place could fall, then maybe the Combine were not as indestructible as they seemed. The issue to Isaac was that Gordon and Alex had not been seen since its fall. Believing them to be dead, the Resistance began a fight across the city, fighting back against the alien empire where the strong Resistance had found their spark and outrage that Gordon and Alex had died. Part of his family was gone, and as he continued to wait to see if they would return and surprise everyone, Alex's guardian, Dog, made his way to Kleiner's lab where he waited with him. A week into the revolution, Isaac began packing up his lab, likely to move to a safer location. City 17 was a war zone, and there were other locations across the wasteland he could work from. Then, he heard his teleporter activate. As he opened the door to his secret room with a shotgun in hand, he was surprised to see Gordon and Alex standing there. He theorised that because the teleporter they had used to escape the prison had been damaged, it had placed them in a slow teleport loop during their escape. With Gordon back to lead the revolution, Isaac continued to pack up his lab in preparation for the war to come. Then, hours later, the top of the citadel exploded. As a smart man, Kleinen knew where this was heading, and so, he left City 17 and made his way to the Outlands, where Dr. Arnie Magnusson had set up the White Forest Resistance Base to deal with this very situation. From here, he reunited with Eli and Arnie, and part of the Black Mesa team was back together. City 17 was on the verge of collapse, and with the aim to do everything they could for their resistance, Isaac and Eli managed to take control of the communication systems in the city. With this power, Isaac took over the Breencast system and urged any who could to evacuate the city out of danger of the impending fall of the Citadel. Alongside this, they received a call from Alex and Gordon, who stood at the base of the structure. They believed that the Citadel would explode in the near future and begin the formation of a super portal, and with this, the Combine would be able to send through their troops in an attempt to reclaim control of the planet. To this, Alex and Gordon went into the Citadel to slow down the destabilization of the core so that more people could escape. With this in hand, Kleiner got to work in doing what he could in White Forest before the Super Portal formed. Over all of these years out here, Arnie and his team had been working on a rocket with an attached resonator that could theoretically close a Super Portal if it were to form. Working against time, the scientists attempted to get the rocket complete so that they could close the portal. During this time, Isaac and Arnie fell back into old habits where they bickered with one another. They were both brilliant, just different people. Alongside this, the combine suppression field that had removed humanity's ability to conceive and carry children had also been deactivated, where Isaac suggested, through Breencasts, that any who could should give serious consideration in doing their part for the revival of the species. Hours later, the Citadel fell, where it destroyed the city around it and began the formation of the Super Portal. Luckily, Gordon and Alex managed to escape the city and made their way to White Forest with a data packet. After handing this to Isaac, he decoded the data within and discovered the coordinates of the Combine homeworld, which was required to close the Super Portal, as well as information about a long-lost research vessel, the Borealis. This vessel, for all intents and purposes, could contain technology that could completely change the tide of the war, and Isaac believed it could save humanity and give them the edge they needed while Eli believed that no one should have control over this amount of power, and asked for the ship to be destroyed. In what appeared to be a heated argument, Eli worried that the use of the ship could lead to another Black Mesa incident. As his friend got worked up, Isaac was called back to work on the rocket by Arnie, 
who was growing impatient with Isaac's lack of work. After a strike on the resistance base, Gordon and the resistance fought the invaders as Isaac, Eli, Arnie and various other members of the resistance continued to work on the rocket. And then, it was ready. With the waves of Combine soldiers down, they prepared for launch. As they ran an analysis on the rocket, the team noticed that there was an anomaly with the rocket. It weighed eight and a half pounds heavier than it should. On the brink of launching the rocket, Arnie decided that this was fine and was within tolerance to launch. Unknown to Isaac, Lamar had climbed into the rocket while he was working on it, where she became trapped inside. With all of this hard work, Isaac asked Gordon to hit the button to launch the rocket. It had been over two decades of fighting, and now it had led up to these final 30 seconds of launching. In this excitement, Eli, Gordon and Alex headed outside to watch the impact as Isaac continued to work inside. Watching from his monitor, he saw the rocket hit the portal and activated the relay device where the portal closed, giving humanity another chance. Dr. Isaac Kleiner had worked so hard to help his friends and chosen family through this awful ordeal. He had no known family before the Black Mesa incident, but he now had Alex, Eli, Gordon, Dog, and even Arnie. From inside the White Forest control room, he continued to work and monitor the effects of the closing super portal, unaware of what was happening in the hangar right next to him. Regardless, there was nothing he could do to stop one of his family being taken from him, and it would only take mere minutes before he discovered his loss. The future of Dr. Isaac Kleiner is unknown after this point, but it is very likely that he continued to fight for the resistance and just maybe played his role in getting vengeance on those who had taken away one of his own. Dr. Isaac Kleiner is one of those characters that is incredibly relatable to me, and he just seems like someone I would get on with. I enjoyed researching him, and this is probably my favourite video that I have remade. I honestly don't know how I was able to make them so short back then. He's a great character with a great story. I wish we knew more about his early years though. Did he have a family, or did he dedicate his life solely to science? He seems like he would have chosen his career, but I am happy he got a family in the end. He deserved it. And I love that Barney would come and check in on him to make sure he was doing okay. Dr. Isaac Kleiner is a great character, and I would love to see him return one day. It's a shame we didn't see him in Half-Life Alex. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, I would appreciate it if you could leave a like and a comment on your thoughts, boost that algorithm for engagement to help this video get to more people. <laughs> I'd appreciate it a lot. I would like to thank my patrons and channel members who are on the screen right now, and an extra special thank you to my gold tier patrons and channel members, Jonas, Lewis, Queen Arby, Fluffy the Dragon, Mr. M791, and this week we have Ruben Mendoza, who has upgraded to the gold patron tier. Thank you. What did you think of this lore? Where does Dr. Kleiner rank in your favourite Half-Life characters? And how long do you think it took Isaac to realise that Lamar was the eight and a half pound anomaly? Let me know in the comments below. Now Resistance member, enjoy your day.